We're going to move into our next speaker, who's going to be talking about high volume, low pressure spray systems. You've heard from Steve Kish earlier today. Again, he is the market development manager for Graco Incorporated. Steve? Thank you, Cam. Generally speaking, there are three basic methods of spray atomization. Air spray, airless spray, and air-assisted airless spray. Each method has its own benefits and limitations for the professional finisher. Air spray technology uses a highly compressed stream of air to atomize paint. Air spray delivers superior finish quality at typically modest fluid flow rates. Airless spray resides at the other end of the finishing spectrum. This technology uses fluid pressure to force paint through a tiny orifice. The resulting stream of paint is atomized as it leaves the orifice and strikes the ambient air immediately beyond the spray tip. Airless spray is characterized by generally coarse atomization and a finish quality suitable for protective coatings. The great virtue of airless spray is speed. This method of atomization sprays paint at high fluid flow rates, which maximizes production speed. Air assisted airless exists in the median between air spray and air assisted airless spray. This method uses lower fluid pressure than airless to atomize paint through an orifice, but also employs small jets of air to assist in shaping the fan pattern of the atomized paint leaving the gun. Air assisted airless spray provides finished quality generally approaching but does not match the high gloss finish of air spray, but operates at production speeds equal to airless spray. All three methods of spray finishing can be further enhanced to deliver higher transfer efficiency through the use of electrostatic application. Electrostatic finishing guns use controlled high voltage to charge the paint as it leaves the gun. This electrostatically charged paint will be attracted to any grounded object. Electrostatically charged paint has a tendency to wrap the target article, reducing overspray and increasing transfer efficiency. Wrap refers to the movement of those paint particles that would normally miss the target toward the back of the target article. This movement is caused by electrostatic attraction. Later in this session, I will cover electrostatic paint applications in more depth. Due to the recent enactment of air quality equipment rules that prescribed compliant types of finishing equipment, many of you have heard of another spray technology commonly referred to as HVLP. The term HVLP stands for high volume, low pressure spray. While HVLP is frequently misrepresented as a new, different technology, it is actually a modified form of air spray that has been in existence for approximately 40 years. As its name suggests, high volume, low pressure spray uses large volumes of air under reduced pressure, typically 10 psi or less, to atomize coatings. Because the atomized paint is propelled from the HVLP gun at lower velocity, there is a reduced chance of overspray. Today, there are two forms of HVLP atomization. These are HVLP air spray and HVLP air assisted airless spray. HVLP air spray uses large volumes of air at low pressure to atomize coatings, while HVLP air assisted airless spray uses fluid pressure to atomize coatings and reduced air pressure to sculpt the fan pattern of the atomized spray. The controlled spray energy of HVLP can be attained through three basic equipment designs. They are Airline feed, gun restricted design, airline regulated design, or 
powered air delivery design. Now, I'd like to briefly explain how each of these equipment designs work. An airline feed, gun-restricted design, reduces airline pressure at the applicator to 10 PSI or less for HVLP atomization. This design allows the use of a conventional 3 8 or quarter-inch airline to achieve HVLP spray. Typically, Air consumption is 10 to 25 SCFM and requires a 3 to 10 horsepower compressor. An airline regulated design uses an air regulator to reduce the airline pressure to 10 PSI or less. A large diameter hose is typically used to deliver sufficient volume of air at lower pressure from the air regulator to the gun. This large hose minimizes pressure loss to the gun. The powered air delivery system uses an electrical power source, like a compressor or turbine blower, to deliver HVLP air pressure. Some powered air delivery systems have difficulty in maintaining 10 PSI as additional guns are added to the system. To overcome this problem, Large diameter air hoses are used to deliver sufficient volume with minimal pressure loss from the powered air supply to the gun. The major advantage of this system of HVLP is that it offers clean and total air delivery control to a multi-gun HVLP applications. Claims of extremely high transfer efficiency have been made for HVLP. However, as I have tried to make clear, tests can be designed to provide high transfer efficiency values. HVLP can generally provide finishers with higher transfer efficiency than conventional air spray systems. At its best, HVLP will exceed the transfer efficiency of air spray and approach the transfer efficiency of air-assisted airless while providing a high-quality finish. But it is important to remember that HVLP operates at generally lower fluid flow rates than the other two spray finishing systems. The lower atomizing pressures of HVLP means that you may be forced to reduce your fluid flow rate to maintain finish quality. At these lower atomizing air pressures, there may simply not be enough air atomizing pressure to keep up. On the other hand, HVLP air-assisted airless spray operates at fluid flow rates similar to conventional air-assisted airless spray and therefore lends itself to a higher production environment. That completes my discussion on HVLP. Thank you for your attention.